Evelyn to Philip, December 11th, 1944. Dearest sweetheart, boy, did I have a stack of mail today. Between Saturday and today, I received a total of 10 letters from you. Now that's what I call mail. Today, I received your letters of November 19, 20, 22, and 23rd, one of which contained the Frank. Saturday, I had mail up to the 29th of November, so you see how disorderly my ideas are concerning your activities. However, after rereading each letter carefully and rearranging all of them, I have a pretty good idea of what has kept you occupied from the 15th to the 29th. They all make fine reading, and I read the one about your meeting with Limey to Ethel. Also in the mail for me was a cute Christmas greeting from Milt Brown, a long letter from Jack, who is most anxious to have a picture of you, Brother Jack, and an invitation to my cousin Bella's wedding to be held at Rabbi Brenner's on Sunday, December 24th. It certainly was swell to get all that mail after waiting so for so long. I'm hoping that the mail will be more regular now. After all, it is almost two weeks since the 29th, and I was accustomed to getting mail from you in five days. I'd much rather have my mail spread out than wait so long for it. I'm glad you enjoyed your furlough, and I wish very much that I'll soon be by your side. Just the thought of it makes me tingle with delight. I'm glad, too, that you enjoyed and was proud of the letter I wrote to the wolves. How dare they kid you! I don't believe I've told you that Adele will answer the following. What's your daddy's name? Philip. Not quite as distinctly as we would say it, but nevertheless clear. What's mommy's name? Avalyn. Now when she's asked who sent her the locket, she replies, Daddy Philip. She also told everyone that Nan Mom Trongen went to New York. When I bring her home from my mother's, Mom usually asks her to give her mom a kiss. Adele replies, wait till I get undressed, Nan Mom. Mom gave all the gruesome details concerning Betty and Saul. No one knew Betty was pregnant until her fifth month. She had hoped to surprise everyone this time. Saul had an excellent position, and they were living in Springfield, Massachusetts. He made $100 a week and received a bonus of $500 semi-yearly, besides his salary. They had a two-story house, furnished with the best that could be bought. Betty just bought and bought and bought. Once, when Freda visited them, she asked Saul why he let her spend so much money recklessly. He told Freda that she never did have many things and that she could buy all her heart desired. She was about to enter her seventh month. One night she began to cough and Saul became alarmed. He called the doctor and the doctor suggested that she go to the hospital. She had begun to stain, too. The baby hadn't always been dead, as I had thought. She felt life at the correct time, but the baby died because it was not quite seven months. It was a blonde boy, just what she had hoped to have. She had ordered a lovely bedspread and drapes for their bedroom just before going to the hospital. Immediately after having the baby, she told Saul, who was with her, that they had everything they wanted except the baby. She told him that when she became well, she wanted to have another, and he said anything she wanted was okay with him. She asked him to take care of the order she had placed. She suddenly found it difficult to breathe and had to be placed in an oxygen tent. Saul was beside her all the time, and she died in his arms before anyone knew what had happened of a blood clot. She had said just a few minutes earlier that she had never felt better in her life. Need I go on? He spent over a thousand dollars on her funeral, had her body sent to the Bronx for the funeral, and carried on like a madman. Mom said he had fainting spells and fell right at her feet on the cemetery. 
His bosses are crazy about him. They gave him a check for $500 before he left for the Bronx and mailed him $200 more so that he would not have to think of anything in page two, that connection. Saul has no one except his father who lives in California and an uncle in New York. He had to go back to Massachusetts alone to take care of the matter of the house, etc. The Gutkins called his bosses and warned them not to let him alone for a minute. Saul wrote a 13-page letter to the chaplain of Izzy's company, asking him to break the news gently to him, pouring his heart forth in the letter. He is trying to have Izzy sent back to the States so that he can help comfort his parents in their distress. Life can be so bitter. Your letter of December 1st came this morning, and I thought it fairly good as concerns traveling time when you consider how long it took for all the others to get here. It informed me that you had received Sharpen Dome's package, Edda and Nat's package, and a few letters from me. I sent off a V-mail today, December 12th, that I typed at the office. I told you in that letter that I would finish this one at home since I did not get the opportunity to complete it last night. It's kind of late now, sweetness, and so I must take my leave, much as I hate to. I want so much to love you, baby. I adore you, Phil, dear. See you tomorrow, honey. Your Ev. P.S. Enclosed is Carmela's picture from Zelda. Please return it immediately. Evelyn to Philip. V-mail dated December 12, 1944. Dearest Phil, I am typing this at work, as I had the form with me, and there is a lull. I started a longing to you last night, but couldn't finish it, as Mom walked in with Ray, and we all got to talking. Mom received a letter from Zelda, with two small pictures of Carmela enclosed. I shall try to remember to enclose her picture in my letter, but you must return it, for Mom wants me to send it to Jack also. It seems Carmela is becoming a typist. She isn't pretty, but there is something very appealing about her. After I posted my letter to you Sunday night, my dad came rushing in to inform me that Eddie was on the phone and would I like to speak with him. Well, I just rushed right over and spent a full 15 minutes talking to Eddie via telephone. Imagine he was right here in Philly but could not call or see us. Seventy fellows were brought in for a good time by a Red Cross escort and taken right back. He told me a little about his experiences this time, the accident in England, that he was a gunner, etc. I asked him how he felt, and he said he felt fine except for occasional headaches. I also asked if he slept well at night, and he said, no, I think too much. It seems as though I had this business with this girl, Ruth Shapiro, all mixed up. He told me she writes him love letters, but that he only saw her once. I was under the impression that she was his girl from what both Ruth and my mother said. Shows you how wrong a person can be sometimes. Adele loves her new toothbrush and particularly likes toothpaste. When I asked her to spit it out, she swallows first and then spits. She always asks for a dink of wati when we are finished. She still has that tendency to use her left hand, but she does so many things with both her hands that it's hard to tell. She eats with her right hand most of the time. She writes with both. She takes her rag dolly to bed with her and sings her to sleep. Adele also sings Zing, 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 Went the Trolley. She, she reminds me of a parrot because she'll try to repeat everything I say and usually says it correctly. First thing this morning, she noticed that it was snowing outside. It rained all day yesterday, and we had to, medium snow flurries most of the day. The other day, just before Ruth left for work, she promised to bring Adele a lollipop upon returning. Don't you think that kid remembered to ask where's my lollipop when Ruth got back? 
I try wherever possible to keep whatever promise I make to her. In fact, I try not to promise her anything I can't keep. She even told Ray this morning, Mommy wished to wash the dolly's hat and tote, referring to the doll Ray once brought her. Adele puts the radio on and off by herself and switches to the various stations. If I don't have time to dance with her, she dances with her dolly. She loves to hold the conversation on the phone. But I'm hitting the bottom, so I'll continue with this in my other letter when I get home. I received your letter of December 1st today. More later, honey. I love you so much. Your Ev.